Morning everyone! So I just wanted to show you what I'm up to in the studio this week. I have the Harry Potter with me, helping out. Um, so we're actually just attaching some handles to teapots. So I want to show you guys how we do that. Um, these teapots are Kurunuki teapots that I've taken, we got shipped from Japan, um, Singapore where we used to live so we're just attaching the handles here and these will go into my next shop update um, coming soon um, so I'll let you guys know when that's happening um, so I'll show you the Harry Potter and he's gonna explain how we're gonna do this okay so at the moment we're what we're doing is attaching the handles which are gonna be predominantly wood I'll just show you this one so predominantly wood and then to fasten it we're using this 3mm brass rod which obviously comes straight um, which will be kind of like this-ish once it's finished you can imagine that um, but obviously it comes in straight rod so what I've done is it's quite sturdy which is good for when you're pouring but it's not good for making so what we do is we've got this a gas burner to heat it up very heavy duty gas Very burner. Heavy duty gas burner. Slightly terrifying. And um, I've made this little jig with, you can see, my terrible markings on it. On how we're Very gonna, homemade. Very homemade. How we're <laughs> going to make the brass. So if you imagine we heated it up and it's semi bendy. So we go on here and then bend down here to make this shape. So at this point it will be a U because we'll have bent it down like this. And then once we've got that, it goes into here and if, if you imagine it's a U shape again still so up here heat up and then bend down to get the angles to make this shape and then finally we need the hook to go through the teapot so this will be straight piece again here like this so we put it in here and then we bend down around these pins to get a rough hook shape and then we can do any more tweaking we want with uh, just a pair of pliers when it's heated up to make sure it fits each one that's about it, really. Um, we've got these pieces of wood to be the handles. These are just pieces of words we kind of forest in, foraged in the um, in the local park. And these ones are really nice. So what we've done is just like smooth them over with some sandpaper, and also just like cut off some of the rough bits, which actually leaves a really nice pattern. Um, so we're going to try a few different um, finishing methods for the wood to make them kind of like quite nice and waxed. So we have some, what is it, lin? Danish oil. Oh, Danish oil. So Danish oil them and then finish them with wax, probably. To... Yeah so that they last a long time. I'd say these will last for ages, they're so, they're really pretty. We're actually gonna also, um, hopefully if it works, we'll show you some ways of sealing the wood um, by charring, which is quite a traditional method. Um, and it will give like a lovely black charred effect as well. So yeah, we're just gonna um, see which pieces of wood we wanna match to the handles and then we're gonna make the um, brass attachments. So I'll just pop you up so you can just see that as we go. So I've just chosen out the different pieces of wood will that will be the handles for the teapot. Um, I just try to choose the wood based on like the thickness and um, the colour so I quite like how this one is a bit mottled, a bit darker wood which goes nicely with the green glaze um, whereas this one is quite a light glaze so it's quite nice with the lighter wood and we're just sanding off any rough bits just to make sure it's nice and not splintery off for a handle.
So I wanted to show you the um, handles we've been working on. Um, you should have got a little like montage of clips of what, what we've been doing. Um, but I just wanted to show you, um, I've just waxed up the, um, the wood that will be the handle. And um, so the idea is that the we, we've made these little kind of attachments for the handle. So this is out of um, three millimeter brass and um, it has a hook at the bottom which, which will attach to um, the teapot and then it has this little um, kind of a shelf where the handle will attach to. So if I show you, these are all the handles um, that I've oiled. Um, so for the oil, let's see, yeah. So for the oil, I, I use this uh, Danish oil and you only need a little bit so what you do is apply this every six hours three times to fresh wood and um, so this is one handle and then I've also so the idea is that the um, this will go attach to the teapot and then the handle once we drill a hole through it will sit on the step and um, we've also played around with charring the wood to seal it so charring helps because it kind of um, seals the top soft layer of wood at the, on the surface so this is I think given quite a really nice effect so um, this is has less charring than we did for this one which is really black but I think they both look really nice yeah, so we're. I'm just going to be oiling those um, once more today and then once tomorrow and then we'll, I'll show you how we actually attach them to the teapots. So for the rest of the day today, I think I'm just going to be doing bits and bobs around the studio. Um, I have these, all these vases I've thrown. And what I like to do with vases is to kind of throw and like um, wire off using um, one of the kind of curly wires which gives like a nice pattern I'll show you yeah so it gives quite a nice like pattern to the base um, and what I do is just hand um, turn the edges so it's nice on the outside but I like how kind of raw this is and then what I'll do is sand down the pot so it, it definitely sits flat on the surface so that's a nice way of doing it instead of doing a foot ring which I like to do for like my more decorative vases um, yeah so I'm gonna get on with that and I'll probably show you how I do that and then I've also got a few bowls to trim as well yeah so I'm gonna do that now Hey guys, so I just wanted to show you what I'm doing. I'm just trimming up some bowls. Uh, I'll just flip you around. So just these are just the bowls I have left to trim. I've made some kind of mixing bowls out of black clay and also just some normal bowls um, from a red stoneware and also some white, this would be like a speckled stoneware. So I've just been trimming these up today so I have some drying out here as well. So I'm going to trim, I've been trimming just like a, a simple foot ring. If I can put you there. Yeah. So I quite, I quite like to round off the bottom of my foot ring. I think it just complements the round shape of the bowl quite nicely. So <clears throat> I just wanted to show you how I do that. If you're a beginner and it's, it's I find it a quicker way to centre is just to use a needle so you kind of know so when it hits the pot um, you kind of know where on the wheel it's too close so if it scratches the pot here you can kind of push it to the other side to get it more into the center so 
So as you can see, it's kind of running all the way through. So you can kind of, this is basically centered. And then what you can do also is just to do a little circle on top. And then if your circle is has the same distance all the way around from the edge of the foot, it's pretty much in centre now. So once you have that, then you can just um, attach the pot into place. So I just use some clay lugs. I find it best just to um, kind of push the pot down to support it, then pop the lugs in place at the bottom and I, I squish from the outside so that it kind of um, pushes the clay up to the edge of the pot. This way you're not pushing the clay too much into the rim. So if you do that, you can easily dist distort the rim. Um, so this is just like, like a gentle way to um, fix the pot to the wheel. So I just use um, a loop tool to trim usually. So you can just start by smoothing out the base. It's also good to hold your tool close to the to the end around here, so you have as as much control. You have more control over it. Then I just trim the um, sides just to get those nice and smooth. And I'll be trimming a foot on this, so um, I kind of go. I'll go in at the side to get that foot shape. So this is what I mean about a foot. So it's like protruding from the base of the bowl. And for these bowls, I'm doing a foot of about nine centimeters. So that just needs to come in a little bit more. And for my foots, I usually like to um, put a little I like it for the the kind of the top of the foot, I guess, the area I'm, I'm trimming now um, to have a little groove and then for it to come up into the foot. I think it just looks nicer. But obviously you can make it straight or however, however you like. And then I just make sure that the base of the bowl is, follows the same profile up to the foot. Okay, so that's about nine centimeters. And then, okay, so I'll just give it a last, what I do is just like to even up the base a bit. and then we'll take the weight from the center. So you can angle your tool so that, yeah, it digs into the clay, moving from the center outwards. do is also 
push in the push into the base just to see if it's got any give and this one's still quite stable so I'll just trim a little bit more off And then I just trim a little ridge inside. And then just flatten that ridge out into the middle. And then I just like to curve the foot rim just from that to the base. Just so it's kind of like an arch. It's personal preference. Some people leave it flat up to you really and then I just make sure that the base of the bowl is smooth into the kind of the profile here yeah and that's it really so once you're happy with that then you can just sponge off um, kind of just to smooth out any um, kind of lines you've made with the tool but I mean you can also leave them if you like to show that kind of texture whatever glaze you'll use probably the glaze will cover most of those lines and then I just mark with my maker stamp so just stamp in the middle I also sometimes stamp the outside as well Just remove those lugs of clay. And what you can do is also do some, you can trim down to the edge if you want as well. Um, but I am kind of happy with how thin the rim is, so yeah. You can kind of you can pick it up with the rim but the, the the foot but this foot is a little bit wet so I don't want to do that. So I'm just gonna Yeah, so I'm just gonna sponge off the top where the those lugs have left a little bit of clay. You can also sand these off at a later stage but I just kind of try to sponge off the majority. Hey guys, so um, we're going to attach the handles now, so I'll just spin you around. Um, so this is a piece of wood we've sanded down, um, we've oiled, so what oil did we use? Oh, Danish oil, Danish oil, and then we've waxed it with beeswax. So it should be nice and treated now, and we're going to drill some holes and attach some of these um, brass handles that you saw us um, bending earlier. So yeah, I'll show you how we do that. <laughs> so where are we going to put the holes on this? brass handles now so they're gonna attach onto the teapot like that and I thought it would be nice to give a little bit of a textured effect to the brass so I'm gonna do some hand hammering um, just on the arms so the best thing to do that is to use one of these I've learnt these are called ball pane hammers so basically it has a smooth kind of um, rounded end to the hammer which is great if you want to add texture to metal and um, what you want to do is hammer it on a uh, metal, very hard surface. 
So I'll just show you what I mean by the hammered effect. it's left like this kind of nice little I don't know like a little textured hammered effect on the metal which I think is quite in keeping with the teapot so it just adds a little a nice little addition to the handle so I'm gonna get on and do that so these are the hammered brass so you can see that it gives it a little like nice texture and catches the light so yeah this one will sit on the teapot like this so I'll show you us attaching it um, in a bit. Okay. Um, so I'm just attaching the, um, well the brass has, has gone through um, a hole that we've drilled, but I just want, because it's a little bit wobbly, I want to attach it in place with some string. So this is just some um, natural tube string um, that I'm going to use. So I'll show you how I attach it. So basically, um, I start with the, so I just put the string in between here and then I lay the string flat underneath and then um, quite tightly wrap it around. So I want the string to um, go over the wire at the top. Sorry, I'm just gonna try to lay that as close as the top. Yeah, okay. So you have to hold the string underneath and then the brass on top a little bit fiddly and then I'll start wrapping from this end so that if I started here it would slip down so I just start at this side and then um, wrap around I should have actually cut it up off a bit earlier. Let's cut that end off. Okay. And then before, about a few turns before, so maybe four th turns before the end, um, what I do is use a metal loop. wind over the loop a few times, say four times. Should have left a little bit more, but then you use, kind of bend it up a bit and thread the end through there. Better to leave a bigger hole than this. Okay, and then the idea here is to pull this metal loop through this so that the string goes with it and attaches the end, secures the end basically. Um, so this can be a bit tricky because it's quite tightly round, so it's best to use some pliers.
and then you can just cut the end bit off. So now the brass is much more, it won't bend as much, well not bend, but move within the hole so that it can take the weight of your teapot. But yeah, there it is. Yeah, I just wanted to show you the um, teapots, how they look with the handles attached. So this is one of the back handles, so like this, and then so the handle has been it's a piece of foraged wood that we've attached like brass loops to and then I've also kind of done some weaving with some jute string so it looks like that at the back and you hold it like this so that's one of them and this one is also pretty much the same handle show you that yeah, and it's actually very comfortable to hold. You kind of brace using the top um, on your thumb. Yeah. And then for the um, above handles, this is one of the bigger teapots. So here I've, we've bent the brass round to attach to loops on the pottery body. And then this goes up into a branch then I've just um, woven round um, the same jute string just to um, cover the bent brass at the top yeah so this is quite nice so I'm really happy with how those turned out and I also have one more that I'll show you I took pictures of it yesterday so it's inside I'm really happy with this one oh. Yeah, so this one is a smaller one and use the same brass, um, same way to attach the handle. And for this one, because um, when the teapot wasn't in use, it kind of moved a lot, the brass moved a lot. So I just secured it with some rope and then also um, weaved that kind of like a similar to like how you would do macrame, but um, yeah. But I like this one because it's like, it's got a little cute tail. Reminds me of like, my little pony, my little pony, <laughs> that kind of thing, but it's cute. Yeah, so I'm really happy with how that, oh yeah, and I've also got one more. So this is the only other type of hand handle I've done. So it's a side handle. So this is a teapot. So it's more in my, um, this is like more my ripple design um, style of carving. So it's more like undulating flows of water, flow, kind of like flowing water like it would be in a river. So this, this has been glazed kind of a midnight blue kind of um, ombreing up into the white. And for this one I've secured a branch in this attachment here, you can see and then also secured with some rope around the edge so for this one you hold it you hold it at the side this is the branch that's been attached into this um, kind of attachment and then I've also secured with some rope around the join and you just hold it like this this way to pour your tea but yeah so these are the all the teapots that will be in the next shop update so I think um, that should have already been live last week, but if there's any pots um, still available, I will leave the link down below. Um, so yeah, these are all the pots that I'm um, <laughs> photographing to sell. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm just going to be photographing everything. And um, I will see you guys probably in the next vlog. I'll probably end it here. Um, yeah, because we're getting ready for the shop update. I've got loads of stuff to do for that, which is really exciting. So that should be actually live on the website. And um, 
I'll either leave a link down below if there's anything left in the shop for you guys to buy if you want to pick, pick something up for Christmas or you can also just sign up to my mailing list which I'll also leave down below and that's where you'll be kind of notified for future shop drops and also um, I always give discount codes to my mailing list subscribers as a thank you for joining me on this pottery journey so um, yeah I'll leave it here guys and I hope everyone has a great weekend or a week coming up whenever you watch this um, yeah happy pottering bye